as far as emotionally, how am I doing postpartum? Huh, this is, this is hard to describe. She didn't like that. She's not appreciative. She's like, listen, I was fine where I was. Hello, Mountain Family. So today I am finally doing Andy's two-month update. She was technically two months on the 7th, and it's now, what, the 11th? Oh, it's the 10th. Okay, I'm a little bit late. But I got busy, and, you know, we've got a lot going on. So... Now we're going to be doing this update. As far as her stats, like length and weight and all that, we, her appointment is Friday. So I don't have an exact number yet, but I can give you a guess. I think that she's at least 10 pounds, if not more. I'm going to guess 11. I feel like that's pushing it, but I'm going to guess 11. And she's at least 21 inches long. This is a three to six month onesie, and it fits her perfectly. Here, I'll show you. Like, see? Yeah, she fits into this like really well. There's not much give at the bottom of this onesie. As far as eating, our little chunk of lunk over here drinks anywhere from three to four ounces of formula and she nurses. Yeah, she does both. Sometimes she'll have a four ounce bottle and go to sleep for a couple of hours, wake up when a nurse, and sometimes she drinks a four ounce bottle and she wants to nurse immediately afterwards. It really just kind of depends on what she wants, but she still loves to nurse. She is not supplemented at night because I am not waking up to make a bottle when I can just hook her up to my boob and go back to sleep. That's like one of the benefits of breastfeeding. You don't have to make a bottle, so I don't at night. For sleep, speaking of... <laughs> She's going to give us a big yawn. Everything is still kind of varied. Sometimes we go to bed at 10 o'clock. Sometimes we go to bed at 1 in the morning. I mean, it really just depends. It depends on when she wants her last feed and when we go to bed that night. There really is nothing like set in stone yet. And it's the same for waking up in the morning. Sometimes she wakes up at 8 o'clock. Sometimes it's 9.30 that we're crawling out of bed. It really just depends on how much sleep we got last night. Sometimes she wakes up in the middle of the night like two, three times. Sometimes she only wakes up once, but she does wake up at least once. So it really just depends. Just depends on how much sleep she got. She is having problems with reflux. She is a very gassy baby, particularly at night. And it really doesn't matter what formula we put her on. We've put her on soy. We've put her on the gentle formula. We've put her on some like advance. I mean, it does not matter. So because it doesn't matter, Matter what formula we put her on and it all makes her gassy just the same we put her on the advanced because we have tons of cans of it and when we run out of cans of that we might just put her back to the soy I don't know we'll see because it doesn't matter she's gassy either way I am gonna talk to her pediatrician about it on Friday poor baby she's not happy <laughs> when she's gassy I don't think any baby is but still she's not happy as far as development, milestones, stuff like that, I don't know if she's like attempting to crawl or whatever that was the other day. If you were on my social media, you know what I'm talking about. But I put her in the center of her play mat and she somehow managed to get herself all the way off of it into um, a little table that I have, the table in my living room. She got herself from there, the play mat, all the way to the corner. I don't know if she like army crawled herself or like wiggled herself, but she managed to move herself from one spot to another. So maybe she'll be an early crawler. Who knows? I guess we'll just see. She's also starting to get a little better with her head control. It's not like perfect or anything, but it's a little bit better. It gets a little better every day. She also can roll when she wants to from her belly to her back, but not from back to belly. But I think that's because she's a belly sleeper. She will not sleep soundly any other way but her stomach. I've tried. Devin, I really have. We've tried to put her on her back and she will wake up all the time. She does not sleep 
sleep soundly. And I know it's because of the gas on her belly. And then she just likes to sleep on her belly. So we just have to make sure that there is nothing in the bassinet when she does sleep. Like nothing. So that she can still sleep soundly and she's still safe at the same time. Right now I'm still her favorite person. Probably because I've got the boobs. But she's starting to get more interested in her dad and her sisters. And whenever they try to play or talk or interact with her. She'll be very interested in what they had to say. For a baby at least. And other fun facts about her that I could think of. Her hair has gotten lighter. I don't know if you all can like tell. You probably can't. But her roots are really red. I mean like bright orange red. It's just the tips of her hair that are brown to blondish. You have to like really look at it. I don't know if I can. Here. Here sissy. Will you let me show everybody your pretty hair? See how red it looks? You can even tell in this fluorescent light. Oh, don't get mad. Please don't get mad. Oh, no. Okay, she's mad. Okay. Anyway, her roots are like really orange. Like when I was a kid, bright red orange. And I'm thinking she just maybe, take this with a grain of salt, but she just maybe get my hair. Oh, I just remembered this one. This is an interesting fact too. Andy has a little freckle right here on her inner left thigh. And I have a freckle in the same exact place. It's actually really neat. And I think that's all I can think of to tell you guys about Andy. I'm going to tell you guys now how I'm doing at two months postpartum. Physically speaking, I'm doing pretty good. I had a seven-week appointment instead of a six-week because I couldn't make it to the six-week because of Devin's work schedule. So we did a seven-week appointment. And, of course, my luck. I mean, really, are you guys surprised at this point? Because <laughs> I'm not. Uh, my luck would have it. My OB is out of country because she's originally from Germany. So she's out of the country right now and she won't be back until May. So I couldn't get like an official exam done because the nurse practitioner can't really like do what an OB can do. But she did tell me that I do have a prolapse. My uterus isn't exactly where it used to be. It's not a huge problem because it's not like right there at the opening and it's not out of me. So therefore it's not like an urgent issue where there needs surgery to be done. But um, it has prolapsed. If you've never had a prolapse or if you don't know how that can cause issues, um, to put it kind of um, vaguely because I don't want to go too much into detail because it's kind of embarrassing, uh, let's just say it makes it kind of hard for me to use the bathroom. And I'm going to leave it at that because I'm going to get really embarrassed. Also at that appointment, my birth control options were limited. The nurse practitioner had not been trained to give IUDs yet. So my only options were the pill, depo, or the arm implant. I've watched somebody get the arm implant and it terrified me. And I was like, no, that's a big needle. No, no, no. And I was really scared of depo at the time because like literally every woman I've talked to, this is not a joke, every woman I've talked to has gained tons of weight on it and they have really bad side effects and it scared me too. I'm really bad at taking pills. So I can't do a birth control pill and I don't want to get pregnant. So because I was less scared of depo than I was of the arm implant, I got depo. And it turned out not to be that bad. Actually, I think it like realigned my hormones or something because before the depo, I was very hormonal. I was gaining weight for some reason and I was just bleeding straight. Like there was no stop, no break from the bleeding. It just kept going. So I think the depo like helped realign my hormones because now I'm losing weight. I don't know exactly how much I've lost because my scale broke. Um, we're getting a battery this Friday. So I will know this weekend how much I weigh. But if I had to guess I'm going to guess I probably weigh somewhere in the 160s because my maternity stuff is huge on me but my pre-pregnancy stuff does not fit yet I'm in that weird postpartum place where nothing fits hence why I'm wearing my husband's t-shirt still as far as emotionally how am I doing postpartum huh this is this is hard to describe I'm hesitant to call it postpartum depression because I know what that feels like. I know what that disconnect and disinterest feels like in your kid. If you've never heard my story, I will have a link up below and also in the description bar. I know the severe side of postpartum depression and how awful and just nightmarish that is. I don't know like a less severe version of that. So I don't know if I am going through postpartum depression because I do have days where I have no energy. I don't want to do anything. I pretty much just want to lay on the couch and cry and I'm very serious. But I've also been feeling this since like 
I don't know. It's It's been a while, hasn't it? I know for a fact that I have anxiety issues, if nothing else, because I've had three panic attacks in just the time that we've been in this house. And we've been in this house for, today's the 10th, so we've been in this house for going on a month, and I've had three panic attacks. She prescribed me an anti-anxiety, but so far, it's not really doing much. You have to kind of give medicine a little while to work, and so far, no luck. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to follow me on social media, my links are down below. And I will see you guys tomorrow in a new vlog. Bye, guys.